How's everybody doing tonight? Good. 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 Excited to see snowflakes flying out there? Yes. yes. <laughs> everybody here an ice fisherman? Do we have anybody that doesn't ice fish? How many, I'm going to the first time this year. How many of you guys are dock fishing right now? If you're not, boy, I'll tell you, you're missing some great fishing. Yeah. The plastic bite's been hot, too, so cold front's probably going to slow them down a little bit, but they'll go back on again eventually. Um, what we're going to talk about tonight is microplastics, so small stuff for the most part, like under two inches long. And everything I talk about tonight is going to be applicable to both open water and to ice fishing. The, there's, there's some differences between the two, obviously, but the, from the plastic standpoint, there isn't that much difference other than di maybe difference between casting and retrieving. But you're still going to, still the setup on the plastics is very similar or almost identical. Same thing with the jigs that we use. Um, so one of the key things to plastics, since everything that you're trying to make that fish think that, that plastic is something that he's used to eating or he wants to eat or something that gets him excited. So one of the most important things with the plastics is how it's hanging in the water. So if you, if you don't remember anything else from tonight, just remember that how that bait is in the water and, and the attitude that the bait has is, is critical to how the fish perceive it. Whether they think it's something pretty natural that they're gonna wanna eat or whether it's something they're gonna shy away from. And it doesn't mean that if it's not hanging properly, a fish won't eat it. When fish get just smoking hot, They'll eat everything, they'll, they'll eat a cigarette butt if you throw it in the water if they get, you know, really excited. But most of the times they're not that crazy excited. Most of the time they're somewhere in between that and completely <coughs> negative. So, and that's, so that's what we kind of have to tailor everything to is for, you know, for that average fish. Um, what I was rigging up here before so that you folks could get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Before we even talk about how the plastics go on the jigs and the different ways that we hook them up, if we're talking about how the fish perceive that plastic and how it hangs, one of the most critical things is what your bait does in the water when it's hanging on your line. Now, when you're casting and retrieving, it's not nearly as critical because you're fishing, you're fishing horizontally. You can, you can tie that lure or that jig on, or um, it doesn't really matter. That bait is still going to be traveling horizontally, which is pretty natural for the fish. I mean, they're used to seeing things you know, move on a horizontal plane. They're used to seeing things go up and down. They're used to things moving horizontal. So you can almost do no wrong in a sense that way. As long as that bait is moving horizontally, it looks pretty natural. But as soon as you stop that horizontal motion and you go more vertical, something happens, something changes. The hydrodynamics of that bait now, it's, it's just your line in, in that bait. So what ends up happening is how you tie or how you connect to your bait becomes becomes more critical. Now I usually use a palomar knot, which is you know you go through and you go through again and you get a big loop and you tie it so you get you got two contact points holding that bait. So it's a very sturdy, rigid connection point. When you use a direct tie like a, a trilene or improved clinch, any of those knots that cinch down really tight to your jig, it's really it's a good connection but it also tends to control what your bait is doing then. So it sets the tone for what the attitude of your bait is. Now, you, this is a small tungsten jig. It's in one of our new colors, uh, Magic School Bus, so it kind of glows like crazy. Um, but I'm gonna show you real simply the difference. Now, the way I like to have a horizontal bait like this hang is I wanna ha have it hang more or less horizontally. So as you can see right now, I've actually pulled that knot and I'm forcing that the hook to actually almost point up a little bit which isn't bad if you're gonna err, err you want to err towards going up not going down but if that knot gets pulled like say I just I'm just going down to the lake and I've got my you know everybody does this right we hook our we hook our jigs on our rod like that but what we just did by doing that is we took that knot and we flipped it and we pulled it towards the towards the front of our bait now. And you'll see what happens when I hold it now. See how it's hanging up? It's hanging in the same attitude. So no matter what we do now, no matter what bait we put on there when we drop that down into the water, it's not gonna look natural. 
it's it's going to be hanging like this. And most fish or other bait fish don't kind of hang around on an angle like that. So you can also kind of cheat it. You can, you know, if, if we were to get it pulled off to the side and drop it down in the water, it'll affect the way it hangs too. Now it's hanging, you know, tallywampus to the side. So again, it doesn't look it doesn't look natural. So ideally, what we want is we want that bait we want that bait nice and horizontal. So it's whether you're putting live bait on there or whether you're putting plastics on there, it doesn't matter. So for me, every time I set the hook, whether I'm open, if I'm using this kind of a knot and I'm fishing more vertical, I always I'm in a habit of I I just do that. I straighten that knot. I pull it back towards the point of my hook. Then I know it's hanging horizontal. Now you can get around that. You can get around that by using um, a loop knot. Okay, so you can tie a knot that knot that you actually have a loop that connects the bait. You can use a snap. You know, a small one of those little fast snaps. Those little guys. Um, I tend to shy away from using more hardware down here. So if anything, I'll usually tie a loop knot. And I'll get into some of the other reasons why I don't like the hardware down here on the baits when fishing plastic. So that's, that's, if you don't remember anything else from tonight, just remember that, especially with these small baits, that how you tie that hook on there is really critical. It, it, and it can make the difference between one guy sitting out there pounding fish one after another after another and a guy next to him not hooking anything at all if that jig is hanging, you know, like that. So that's horizontal. One of the keys to horizontal presentations is making that bait hang properly. Um, if you're jigging for walleyes, you know, with the big three-quarter ounce jig and you're bouncing the bottom and stuff, it's it's not nearly as as, uh, as critical, but when using these little tiny baits and stuff, it, it is. So that's, that's like rule number one. Um, the second thing is that affects that is your, your plastics themselves will affect how the bait hangs and how it performs. So getting your bait on there straight is critical too, um, especially when you're if you're doing a vertical jigging motion with the bait. And I'm going to give you a, I'm going to show you some examples here of that. We've got all different shapes and sizes of baits up here, but the one I'm going to pick on right now is is Little Adam's Jumbo Wedgie Tail because it's a big, it's a relatively long bait for ice fishing. It's about an inch and three quarter inches long. Um, got a real fine tail on it, goes all the way out. And these can be kind of a bugger to get on straight. So one of the points I want to make here is when you when you thread your plastic on, no matter what it is, whether it's a you know, like one of these microplastic fathead fries or you know crappie craws or just about anything up here that we have, panfish assassin, you want to make sure you get it on straight because that's the other thing that's gonna affect what that bait does in the water. And this takes a little bit of practice to get it on there straight, but for the most part, you just wanna have it so it's not like going way off to the left or way off to the right and not bunched up. Just kinda of like threading a night crawler on, basically, but you wanna get it on there straight. Some of the plastics also have an, a, a top and a bottom. <coughs> and a left and a right side, which we're getting more complicated here. But when you look real close at your plastics, they'll have flat sides, they'll have like knife edge sides, right? So that's important too. When you get into baits like, even like your panfish assassin, or your, we got a new one, the candy plastics um, mini B. I mean, it, it's pretty obvious on some of these baits where the tops and the bottoms are. This one's all sealed up, so I'm not gonna break that one. Like this little guy, he's definitely got maybe not a top and a bottom that's real obvious, but he's definitely got a left and a right, right? I mean, he's got the eyes on the side. So what you wouldn't want to do with him is you wouldn't want to hook him sideways, okay? You wouldn't want him with one eyeball up and one eyeball down, kind of like a halibut or something like that. You know, you want him, you want him horizontal. But there's some other baits that aren't quite so, they're not quite so, uh, so obvious. Like the little Adam Noogie Tail. This is one I see get get hooked <clears throat> improperly quite a few times, and then 
guys will say, well, you know, I didn't catch any fish on that, on that bait. The noogie tail has got, it's kind of like a, call it like a reaper kind of a tail. It's a flat, it's a flat tail that comes out to a point. Baits with flat tails like this, you want to set them up so that the flat side is horizontal to the world. Okay, because you want the bait to flow and to swim. Again, it's, you know, when you look at it, it sounds obvious, but when you're in a hurry and you're, you're rigging that bait on there, it's really easy just to throw it on there, especially if the fish are biting really, really well. And if you put that bait on and you set it up knife edge wise so, it, so that it's, so it's not horizontal and you jig it, it does nothing. So a matter of fact, it can actually just spin because now it's acting, you know, like a, yeah, it's like a rudder. So it's steering your bait. Which brings up my next point. Plastics are almost never perfect. They're soft, they're molded hot. So when they come out of the mold, every plastic's gonna have a little bit of a different bend to it. So one of the things that, that the guys that are better at fishing the plastics, that pay more attention to detail, try to look for is they try to see if that plastic has got a curvature to it when they put it on. They'll actually, they can even counteract that a little bit and make it fish straight. Um, We've got a trick with a lot of the little atom stuff that we did on the tournament circuit is we would take them and one of the reasons why the guys like buying them from me in these <coughs> these nice resealable bags, it's it's not just because they're easy to get in and out of, but what some of the guys will do with these is we heat treat them after we get them to make sure everyone is straight as an arrow. We'll take them and throw them in the microwave for like 10 seconds, but we get them all straight in the bag first like that there's actually like 10 baits in there right now, all lined up straight. We can either dip them in hot water or we'll throw them in the microwave and then let them cool off. And then we know every single one of them is just perfectly straight. So it's not that there's anything wrong. I mean, you can fish a bait that's not perfectly straight. It's just we get really picky sometimes about that stuff. And I don't know if any of the bass guys do it with the rubber worms or not, but it might be one of those secrets they don't talk about. They might be back at their hotel rooms doing that. But on the as a general rule, if I get a tail that's not perfectly straight, I try to make it angled up. So I'll, when I thread it on, I will thread it so that the plastic is pointed up instead of, you know, as a, you know, posted down towards the bottom. And that just, it makes a difference. If I get one that's kinked really bad, it's the last one that I'll use. I'll wait till the bite's really super hot and then I know they'll eat it anyways and I'll try to pick the straightest tails out of there first. So. Um, so pay attention to the details. Look at the flat sides on the baits. They'll tell you a lot. Generally, every bait, the flat side is you're going to want to have it, you know, horizontal to the world. So, uh, let's see. Next thing on here. <coughs> when it comes to jigging baits, a lot of guys will talk about tungsten jigs, and everybody talks about how tungsten <coughs> falls super fast. Tungsten has one of the reasons, tungsten does some amazing things for soft plastics. And it's because of how fast it falls. But it's not how fast it falls, say like in 30 feet of water, right? It's not how fast it goes from, from just underneath the surface to all the way down to the bottom. Think of, think of tungsten falling fast, but falling fast just over, you know, 10 thousandths of an inch, little tiny space, right? Because not only does it fall fast from the surface down to the bottom, but all those little distances in between, when you jig, tungsten falls really fast. So tungsten reacts much faster than lead. So <coughs> tungsten will allow you to put action on a bait when fishing vertical that lead just physically can't do in the water because it reacts so fast. If you drop that, that jig a, a, you know, just a couple thousandths of an inch, it moves that couple thousandths of an inch that much faster than a lead jig, jig does of the same size. So tungsten will allow you to do things with a bait like shake it without really moving it, okay? Um, it'll, then, then you can drop it fast too and it, it'll, it'll make the plastics kick harder than a lead jig will. But that doesn't mean that lead's bad, it's just different. Sometimes you don't want a super fast action on a bait. Sometimes you want a slow undulation. And in those cases, lead can actually sometimes outperform tungsten. But it's not just the lead or the material of the tungsten that controls that too. Some of you guys were looking at the spring bobber I have up here. 
The spring bobber too can change that action of that bait when we start talking about slowing a bait down. Your rod tip and what happens down at the end of your rod also controls what happens down at that end where the plastic is at. So you can make a bait swim, you know, very gentle just by having the spring bobber matched up with that <coughs> plastic down there too. So it'll give a very different action to the plastic as opposed to, you know, using the spring bobber that slows things down. Or in my case, I can I shake like crazy, and I always have. So the spring bobber actually helps me. It dampens my shakes. So, which you know, because okay, so a lot of times I'll have to actually plant my arm. If I have to hold my rod still, I'll plant my arm because I can't stop the shake. My left hand doesn't shake at all, but I can't set the hook worth the darn with my left hand. So, but um, as opposed to this solid carbon blank with no spring bobber on it. <laughs> This is one of those ones that I can really I can really shake that bait or shake that plastic. And some guys will call it pounding. Pounding is a little more distinctive where you're actually moving at a greater distance, but with a with a with a harder tip you can shake that plastic and make it just quiver down there. So tungsten, lead, rod tips. To a certain extent, the line you use has an effect on what you can do with that jig. Not as much. But the your 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 lines like your braids and things like that, as long as they're not buoyant and they don't float and slow things down, they can affect how you can shake that bait, shake that plastic. <coughs> there's a there's about there's like th I always break my plastics down to three different basic families. You've got you've got your your plastics that are like a reaction type bait. They really don't look like anything. I mean, nothing that the fish ever really sees. They just have lots of action. They have lots of movement. They have, you know, the colors are nice. Um, they got all kinds of lakes and stuff kicking around. Those kind of baits, some of the examples of those, and I'll start passing some of this stuff around. Um, this is called an Ice Mite by JNS Plastics. It's a unique little bait. It's tubular shaped. It's got three different diameters of tubes, and it goes down to a little ball at the end. That little ball just kicks and goes crazy all over the place. Doesn't look like anything I've seen swimming in the water, but it generates, it draws strikes. It looks kind of buggy. So fish just kind of, it doesn't threaten them in any way. It just looks like something to eat. And when you match the right color up with the right mood, and we got three, there's three different sizes of it. It comes in a, a junior. This is the standard one I'm passing around and it comes in a magnum. This is a, this little guy here would, would fish best on a little longer shank hook and I'll talk a little bit about that as we get going here different trying to match up the different jigs with the different plastics some of that's once you hear it it's going to make perfect sense to you but unless you think about it sometimes it, you know it may not but so it's a long slender relatively long slender little bait um, another example of one of those reaction kind of baits is the little Adam Noogie Tail. And this is another bait that comes in three sizes. It comes, this is the standard size here, and it comes in a micro, and then a great big, big monster one that that uh, we asked for for open water fishing for like drop shot and for bass, and we use it for walleye in the Detroit River in the spring too. Um, this bait kind of looks, kinda, I guess it kind of looks a little bit like a tadpole, but it's a round ball and it's got that flat reaper tail that I was talking about earlier. I mean, other than maybe resembling a tadpole, it doesn't resemble anything else. You know, it's got a round ball, so I guess it's kind of like an egg, which is what we were after when we asked little Adam to make this about seven years ago. We were trying to replicate the Jensen egg with a tail. And how many how many guys here have ever fished a, a round Jensen egg out here? Okay, it's pretty it's pretty common. We use them a lot on all different baits out here. It's just as an added a, like a target for the fish to hit. So this is a this is a noogie. It's just it's a it's a round ball with a with a flat tail. It's got that bait's probably done more for for the the microplastics market than any other bait out there. Other than another one that I'm going to talk about, I know everybody's heard and probably fished, and that's a tube tube jig. Um, I've got a just a pumpkin brown pumpkin tube jig up here rigged on a on a standard. Uh, tube jig hook but I did something a little different to it and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later but 
a tube jig itself, you know, it doesn't look like, it kind of looks like everything, right? It kind of looks like a crayfish. If you're fishing it down, scooting it across the bottom, it kind of looks like uh, maybe a minnow in the right colors, right? If you're fishing it horizontal. But I mean, it's just got a bunch of tentacles and it doesn't do a whole lot of anything unless you do it to it. So that's a tube. So it's another, I classify it as another reaction bait. Um, the other one I kind of alluded to, we talked about the nookie tail, but just a round ball, just an egg. And, and this is probably where I started fishing this. You know, if you would have asked me 30 years ago if I was fishing plastics, I would have either thought of a tube or I would have thought of one of these eggs. Now, they stopped making the Jensen egg, I guess about three years ago, and there were still some out there on the market, but we just had this mold made by our friends at J&S, and we're calling these just perch eggs because most of the guys around here use them mostly for perch fishing. Um, so we just simply call them perch eggs. But this is another, it's a, it's a do nothing bait. It doesn't do anything unless you unless you impart an action to it or you put it on a jig that does it. So it's just a, a round egg. They're usually scented with like an anise scent or something else just, and that's more of a cover scent for your scent or mine more than anything else. But it just, it helps the fish hang on a little bit longer. I'm gonna pass this around too. But um, we brought it back. It's the exact same size as the original Jensen egg was. So it's just, uh, call them perch eggs. So those are reaction baits. Now the next kind of baits that I'm going to talk about are baits that are a little more in line with trying to look like something. And this is where it gets kind of kind of hedgy is that it's hard to make a bait that really looks like the real thing and has the same kind of action as the real thing. It's actually a lot easier to make a bait that doesn't look like anything but you control the design so you control how it moves. So it moves like something that's alive. And we're starting to see more and more baits come on the market now that not only have good action, then they move lifelike, but they also really look like something that the fish are used to eating. And I, I've actually got to hand it to, you know, some of the some of the new impulse baits that are out on the market now. They've done a they've done a pretty darn good job with making them actually look, you know, like you know, like the uh, like the real deal and, and have nice action. Um, so I want to pass some of these these little impulse baits around just for you guys to take a look at. Some of you are probably familiar with like the gulp the gulp minnows too. That's another one that's that's another good bait that looks like you know looks like a small fish and and has uh, has good action and scent too. That's, that's the impulse version of that one. Southern Pro makes a little crawfish. They call it the crappie craw. I've never used them for crappies, but I have used them for perch. And this is another bait that, you know, it looks, it's getting closer to trying to look like something real and also have good action at the same time. And this is one of those sleeper baits that a lot of guys um, probably won't try. And I'll, I'll explain, a, uh, I'll do it right now a way to fish this and then I'll come back to it later when I talk about other presentations but I fish this in kind of a non-conventional way and then I'll, I'll get to it a little bit later exactly what we call it this jig is a little bit small for this Again, this bait's got a top and a bottom, a left and a right, because it's got claws on it. So you want to try to get it as straight and true as you can. I didn't do a real good job. Nice thing about plastics are you can always adjust if you don't get it right. Now the way I've got it on here right now, I got it hanging out there pretty far, which is not normally the way I would. I'd usually fish it on a bigger jig. So what you can do. Don't be afraid to do this on any of your plastics. If you don't like the way it looks and it doesn't look natural, pinch it off. You can adjust them. You can do whatever you want with them. You bought them. You want to catch fish on them, so make it catch fish. So <coughs> that is what we call vertizontal presentation. And when Tony Boschel's here in a few 
in a few weeks, I'm sure he'll mention it. If not, I'll remind him of it. But I'll come back to that presentation. But that's just to show you, it's another one of those lifelike looking baits that's got, got a lot of action, but it actually looks like something. It's got the claws and the tentacles <coughs> and the crayfish. So, and that one's from Southern Pro. So all the manufacturers are getting in on it. Bass, you know, Panfish Assassin, same kind of deal. It's a little less lifelike. You know, this is kind of this is like a hybrid bait. It's kind of in between a reaction bait and something that looks like a real, real fish. It's got the shape, but you know, it's got nice action, but it doesn't it doesn't have a lot of real fine detail to it. And then we come to the one that I think we're probably most famous for for talking about up here, and that's the the candy plastics from Micro Spoons and Jigs. This is probably closer to a lot of real life like baits, mostly because of the eyes. And the eyes give this bait a lot of realism. Other than that, it's more, it's kind of along the lines of the panfish assassin with the body shape and everything. But the eyes really make these little guys come to, come to life. And the way that they mix the colors do, do as well. But I'll pass that little guy around. And that's, that's called a fathead fry. Now, that's kind of a unique little bait because of the overall shape of the body on it, which makes it, most fry have like a big bulbous body when they first hatch or when they're real young and then they trail off and you know they get real thin. So to me that makes it look like a real lifelike little critter. Um, when we go to lifelike, I'm gonna just go away from the plastics just a little bit and talk about some of the jigs. Like the bro, the, uh, the mud bug here from Northland you know, it's got little eyes on it too. It's got a nice little head shape on it. Paired up with the right plastics, you can make a pretty nice looking lifelike imitation there too. If you match it up the right way, you know, with the body shape and everything. So, you know, the beautiful thing about plastics are you can mix and match the jigs and the bodies and the tails. You can even combine them. And we're gonna talk about that here in a, in a minute too. So we talked about uh, baits, kind of like replica baits that look a lot like it. We talked about reaction baits, about hybrids, baits that are somewhere in between. We're going to talk about orientation now. And that one that I passed around with that little crawfish on it is, uh, uh, I'll, I'll start with that one. That jig itself is a vertical jig. Okay, that's like just a standard kind of like willow leaf or willow blade style jig. Now out here on Lake St. Clair, I'd say probably, it's probably changing a little bit now, but I'll still bet 75% of these guys fish with, with a vertical bait. And from fishing all over the country, I'll, I'll tell you that on different lakes, there seems to be different patterns that way. And I haven't figured out exactly why, but there seems like some, one of the things that I always try to find out on a lot of these lakes, are they taking the horizontal presentation more or are they taking a vertical? And I'm referring more to ice fishing in this case. Um, but the same thing would apply if you're panfish fishing under a float uh, or anywhere else. It, it seems like there is a tendency for the fish to be more attracted to either vertical or horizontal. We can still fish plastics even on these vertical style baits or these blade or willow leaf generally they're that's you know they're like a willow leaf blade or something we can still fish plastics on it generally we call us a vertizontal presentation and again that's i don't know who coined it first tony or me but um it's a combination of fishing a vertical bait and then fishing your plastic horizontally doesn't always work but when it does work, it usually means really big fish. And for me out here on perch, that's usually the case. When this works, I catch really big fish this way. And I like to fish the noogie tail on there. This is a micro noogie in this case, but it's it's a real simple setup. It's it's kind of like fishing a Jensen egg, and that's kind of one of the other beauties of it is that or our new perch our perch egg is that if a fish even does rip the tail off, they still seem to hit it anyways because it's still got the little ball on there. So you get second chances a lot too if you get a fish that tears it up. But I'll pass that around. Um, you can fish other baits. The other ones that, that work well on here are the JNS um, 
Ice Mite series, the Ice Mite and the Ice Mite Magnum. It's another, it's a slender bait with a tail on it. It also fishes nice in this vertical presentation. Um, the Jumbo Wedgie Tail from Little Adam does. The, and the Jumbo, that's this guy here that I was showing you earlier, this long one. The nice thing about the Jumbo Wedgie Tail is you can micro tune it to whatever you want in length. It's, it's uniform all the way from one end to the other, the shape is. So if I'm fishing that and I'm getting fish that are short striking me, pinch it off. Or if I start to get it worn out from catching too many fish on it, pinch a little bit off and thread it right back on. So you can catch a ton of fish on it. Ice mite's very similar to that. It's got three different segments, but that, that top segment is the beefiest section, so you can just start pinching it away and just keep reusing it. So I know a good tackle salesman wouldn't tell you to, to do that, but I'm a fisherman first, so if you can keep that bait going and keep those fish going, you know, you're going to be more successful out there. So if you don't have to stop and go into your box and pull a new bait out, you're going to catch more fish. So you, if, you, if you can keep that bait going down there as long as possible, the better off you are. So, um, and while I'm mentioning that, I'm going to digress us off on a little quick tangent. Anybody here uh, use adhesives at all on your plastics? Like super glue? Works great. You can super glue a plastic, get it just right on your jig. Before, before a tournament, the night before, we will usually go through and if we've got hot colors, I will super glue them right onto the jig head. So that if I get on a good bite, I'm gonna catch a bunch of fish before that, before that plastic ever gets moved. So, the only downside is if, what usually happens in tournament day is that the fish were biting on one color and then tournament day they, they completely switched on you. So all that all the night's preparation goes out the window and you're out there retying, you know. But uh, so you the plastics you can super glue them onto your onto your jig and get them just perfect. But I'm going to pass this little little bait around with the verizontal micro noogie on it. Um, So we've got that, that vertical presentation with that, that plastic coming in horizontal, vertizontal. We've also got horizontal, which is probably the way most of the guys fish 99% of the plastics. They're going to fish them, fish them horizontal. That's the way most of them are designed, designed to fish. Now with that, you've got all different types of jig options. Um, with the tubes, you've got these little standard like tube jigs right they're just slender little jig head with the with the lead all stretched out the ones that i like to use this is one of those little little tidbits are called speed loader style and if i'm fishing a tube jig these little micro tubes like the ones that we have here from southern pro i use this style because i can thread it on right through the head of the jig hopefully i've got one This one's already loaded on, but I'm going to take it off, and I'll show you how it goes on. This one's got a sickle hook on it. You've got the, I like the big sickle hook. It gives a, a lot more bite. But a lot of guys look at these, unless somebody shows them, they don't really know what the purpose is. But this lead has got a point on it. Okay, on one side. That point is designed so that you can thread it through the nose, or not quite on the tip of the nose, but back just a little bit from the point of the nose on that little tube. You can thread it right on there and shove that little tube or that little jig right down inside. Perfect every time. So I'm going to pass that around and I will probably you have to get another one or get that one back to show you the, one of the other things later. So, tube jigs, basic horizontal presentation. Bass fishermen use it all the time, right? That, I mean, that's, I guess that's one thing I should mention here is everything I'm talking about tonight is really just downsized from everything you guys <coughs> see if you fish plastics out there open water for bigger game fish. What size, what weight is this tube? Uh, yeah, that's probably a 32nd, I think. I usually use uh, 32nd and 64th most of the time. 
on those, especially with that little that little one and a half inch um, tube. So that's horizontal with a tube. We're going to come back in a little while and we're going to completely flip that around with a tube. And that's another thing that's really popular out here that I've never seen done anywhere else in the country. But so that's horizontal with the tube jig. Um, most of the tungsten jigs out there on the market that you guys will see are are also horizontal. Other than one of the new styles we have in here called we're calling it the Koo jig, which stands for a crescent moon. Um, I think that's the Finnish. Is that the Finnish word moon for, goddess. for the moon goddess? Um, that's a that's another that's a vertical tungsten bait that we have in here. It's like a moon glow, only it's it's made out of tungsten. But most of the time when you see guys fishing tungsten, they're going to fish a little guy like this, and it's going to be horizontal as well. Um, most of them have a relatively short shank hook, which doesn't lend itself very well to fishing soft plastics. It doesn't give you much real estate to work with. So what we did was we started getting these little tungsten versions that are basically like a round ball lead jig. We call them the smoothie. One, the ones I've got here is a boogie ball and then we got the smoothie and black nickel. But they're, and I know nobody's gonna see this on camera, but they're, uh, they are a, uh, basically a round ball jig, but they're made out of tungsten. And they've got a nice long hook shank. And that hook shank is what really is the important thing here. Because that long hook shank allows you to fish baits like this jumbo wedgie tail, this long bait, the ice mites, anything with a long profile. It allows you to get more meat on that hook. It allows you to get that hook farther back in the bait so that you don't get all those short strikes. And it just it allows, it just gives you a, a different presentation. So I'm gonna pass, these are really sharp, but I'm gonna pass these around so you guys can, can look at them. So it's, it's basically, it's, it's old school and new school. It's new school tungsten with old school round ball jig. And it works really well for plastics especially on those longer profile baits. Um, vertical presentation, I'm gonna come back to it again. We were talking about the tubes. Here in, the, here in this area, I grew up probably, the, I talked about fishing the perch balls or the Jensen eggs, right, is one of the first things and fishing tubes. I knew from fishing crappies. But then I found out about this other technique a long time ago, and that's taking these little tubes and fishing them vertical. So this isn't vertizontal, this is a this is vertical presentation on these tubes. And what we do is we thread the tube onto um, a standard type of blade spoon type bait, like this forage minnows. I actually like these forage minnows a lot for this, which is kind of a waste because I got a nice finish on them. So I take these 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 forage minnows and I shove them inside one of these tubes. So if the hook comes out the bottom and the tentacles are up on top. Now, what ends up happening with this bait is a couple of a couple of cool things. Um, one, every time you jig it, the tentacles flare open. Mm -hmm. Okay, which drives fish absolutely nuts. I mean, they just you know, you don't have to move it very much to make it kick either. So that works out real well. And it also, most of these baits have got a curvature to the body. Okay, and that curvature, when you drop the bait, allows the bait to swim horizontal. Well, when you're ice fishing, one of the hardest things to do is to do anything horizontal because you're, everything is up and down, right? Well, panfish love to chase. We, we, we call some of the, one of the, one of the presentations we have, we call it teasing the cat where you're, you're basically pulling it away from them. So they love to chase things. So if you can get a bait to go out to the side and then come back, they, they just love that. And then you add the fact that when it's coming back, you got these tentacles pulsating and popping. Well, it's, it's like you can't miss. You can also take this presentation and we can go vertizontal with it. We can take it and we can take one of these, one of these noogies or one of these other plastics or you can take live bait if you want, and a lot of guys will tip them with a couple of spikes or something. But you can take one of these nookie tails and you can put it on there too. I 
have had way too much caffeine today. I normally don't drink caffeine this late. But I've been up since four, so. So anyways, you can take this bait and you can also, you know, you can fish a, a horizontal component on it as well. So that's the vertizontal presentation on it. This looks hokey as all get out, but I'll tell you what, when you have like really <laughs> good perch down there and you've got problems with small perch coming in, bugging you, you put a big old hunk of plastic down there like this and the big fish go nuts. You don't have to worry about the little fish. Um, one of the other <laughs> unique things you can do with these blade style baits, and this is another thing that's not done up here, but it is done down south. And it's done, and I, one of the, one of the uh, things that kind of tipped me off to this was working with micro spoons and jigs, is that they will take a spoon like this, or I should say, like this forage minnow, and take a plastic on it, and rig it so that the plastic is coming straight off of it. Remember I was saying you want it horizontal? Well, if you take it and you rig it straight off of it, and then you cast and retrieve, now you're fishing. Anybody here the Johnson Silver Minnow? It's a real throwback going back a long ways bass fishermen, right? It's just a big spoon with a big single hook on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah right? No, and you can fish. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, and you can fish, a, you can fish a, a, a trailer on that, a, a hunk of plastic, right, a frog or whatever you want on it, and throw it into the slop and bring it back. Well, you can do the exact same thing with these small plastics and do it for perch and crappies and everything else. So we're gonna, going from ice fishing back to open water again. You can take that and with any of these plastics and fish horizontally now, cast and retrieve. And because it's got that surface, that planing feature on it, it's going to do some things coming back that you can't do with any other bait. So it's kind of another unique you know, flip, kind of flipping the cards on everything here. Um, and it's hard doing a seminar like this because I'll, there's so many things that, that cross pollinate each other it's hard to stay on one track because it's, it's, it's very versatile, it's really cool you can do lots of different things with these, with these small plastics you can drive yourself batty with them actually with doing all kinds of different stuff to them um, which kind of leads me to the next thing Where's that little tube? Is it still floating around back there? Let me get that back from you. Because this is a good example. One of the next things, I was showing you how you can pinch these plastics down, right, and make them shorter. Well, you can also make the plastics longer and change their profile. Now, this is part of an ice mite magnum. So this is about half of the magnum. It's the, the last two segments in the ball. You can take baits like this happens to be a super, this is, a, this is their glow green. It's really, really super bright. This is just pumpkin pepper brown. If I want to spice this guy up, the tubes are really good for this. I can take that plastic and I can thread it and I can shove it right up inside that, that tube. I don't know if you can see that, but that's an entirely new bait now. It's a it's the it's a tube. It's real natural, but it's got a it's got a bright tail that's gonna gonna flop around. Now you might say, well, other than color, why would you do that? Well, if you bass fish a lot, or if you pan fish a lot of open water, you know that the fall rate sometimes of the bait can have a big impact on how the fish react to it. Sometimes they want it falling fast. Sometimes they want it falling slow. So you can tune your fall rate, you know, and this is something you can just experiment with. So it's one of those things that it may make a difference, it may not. But on those days, it might make the difference between staying in the strike zone a little bit longer where those big fish are, especially if you're like dock fishing and stuff and casting under a float. You know, like under, a, when you're casting like under a float, that bait swings and falls. Adding a little bit more meat to it will make it fall a little bit slower. So it'll stay in the strike zone a little bit longer. But you don't have to make your bait lighter overall by changing your jig head. Do you guys get, get where I'm going with this? You're, you're like adding buoyancy to the bait, but you're also adding some mass that helps you cast it a little bit more. So same thing when you're fishing vertical ice fishing. It changes your fall rate. 
we come back to the stuff we were talking about earlier about how that jig reacts we start adding plastic to it and stuff we change the way it even reacts down there under the water because we added some buoyancy we added some mass we added some color so there's it's some neat stuff you can do with plastic one of the other things I like to do with plastic other than pinching things down and shortening them up or is with these with the little Adam noogie tails and this goes we got a couple of guys locally that buy the big the big uh, jumbo noogies and I don't have any up here but they're a half inch diameter ball with a with a tail on it there I think they're two and three quarter inches long now by itself that ball doesn't fish really well for the walleyes. It's not a long enough profile for what they want. But what the guys have learned to do is they pinch the balls off, the first two, they stack them up on their big three quarter ounce jig head, and then the last one they leave the tail on. So what it ends up looking like, is it kind of ends up looking like, this is a Gens, a Gens worm. It kind of ends up having a profile like this. It's got a series of balls and then a tail on it. So you can do the same thing with this little one. On a regular long shank jig you can stack, you can pinch the balls off in different colors so you can have that color thing going on again too and you give them, so it's kind of like fishing this this Gens worm only it's it's soft and it's got a tail on it. So you, the point is you can mix and match this plastic stuff. There's no right or wrong way as long as you keep the basic rules of like being horizontal, you know, and not being kinked and turned and hanging the right direction. Other than that, you can mix and match these things all you want to get different reactions. You can drive your buddy nuts because he's standing there pounding fish and pull one of those. You ain't got one of these. <laughs> you know what I mean? What are you getting them on? Oh, you ain't got one. Because <laughs> he probably doesn't. He hasn't got it, got it put together that way. Um, Another way that we can fish, we were talking about fishing horizontal with that bait, getting it to swing way out to the side and come back in. One of the other things we can do with plastics, especially ice fishing, if we want to get it to make it go horizontal, we can swim it in a circle. And that's something I don't see a lot of guys doing, but I learned from a couple of the guys down in Brooklyn that, that chase the red ears and stuff that they really like, those fish like to, you know, to chase the bait. One of the things that they'll do, and I've learned to do it over time too, just to kind of keep up with the Joneses, especially ice fishing, is that you can swim that bait in your hole down there. You can swim it right in a circle. And that fish doesn't know that it's, he's just following it. He doesn't, it, it doesn't spook him at all thinking that it's just going in a circle, just like a jigging repeller, right? It just goes up and around and up and around. Or like our jigging minnows that we've got back there, same, same deal. So another way you can fish horizontal is by swimming that bait round and around and around in your in your hole. Here's another real sneaky trick you can do with, with the plastics. You put these big plastics on, those little fish might grab it, they might swim off with it. They might swim off to the side six, seven feet. If he can't swallow and he can't get that hook in his mouth, you just hold a tight line and wait. Eventually he gets out to the end, it pops out of his mouth, what happens after that? Well, first of all, he attracted some attention, probably shaking his head and swimming off with that bait. But once he lets go of it out there, it's got to come back. So now you just cast it. You use that little fish to cast out to the side. And now you just sit and wait. And as that bait is swinging back, sometimes there'll be a big one that was watching it. And you just kind of just wait. And as it's swinging back, that big one will come in and he'll just suck it right up. So that's not one of those ones that you can do all that easy intentionally, but when it happens, just be ready. You know, don't do any, let that fish swim off to the side with it, that little one, if you don't want to hook him. You don't want to hook him anyways. So let him swim off to the side, let it get tight, let it pop out of his mouth, and then let it swing back and be ready. Won't happen all the time, but you can get some really big bonus fish doing that. And that's another one of those things a lot of guys might not think about, right? They might just rip it, I don't want to get rid of that little fish. I'm going to rip it away from him. Let him go. Let him have his fun. <laughs>